Hello and welcome. Corpus linguistics is divided into two segments. The first one is corpus and the second one is linguistics. The word corpus, it is a Latin word or you can say it comes from a Latin word. In simple English language, it is being referred to as corps with a spelling C-O-R-P-S-E and we have another word C-O-R-P-S. Both of them refer to the same Latin word corpus and it refers to the idea of body. And what is body? Body as a group of something, body as collection of something, not human body, of course. We continue our discussion about corpus. In fact, corpus is a collection of texts of a particular author. As I told you, corpus refers to body, body refers to group or collection. In that way, it is a group of texts, a collection of texts of a particular author, of a particular writer, of a particular creative person, of a particular leader in a speech, and all that. For example, we can say the corpus of William Shakespeare, William Mosworth, Charles Dickens. Thus, it means the collection of everything he ever wrote, William Shakespeare ever wrote. Here, what we have to notice is that there is a difference between corpus and collection. Collection doesn't necessarily mean it's all kept in one place like a library or a database, which corpus does. Collection, it simply refers to everything in existence that fits into that category. So there is a difference between corpus and collection. Collection is about a group of something into a particular category, while corpus is being kept in one place in a large database. We continue our discussion. Corpus. So what we can say is that corpus is a body or a large collection of texts. And text should be real world texts. When we say real world text, it means that text generated by human beings in real situations like those of writers who write novels, those of authors who write journals, create magazines, deliver speeches, and so on. They are the real world texts, real life experienced texts. Corpus is a singular noun and its plural form is corpora or corpuses. Now it is time to discuss linguistics and I don't want to spend more time upon talking about what linguistics is all about. We all know that linguistics is the scientific study of language. Here my focus is about corpus linguistics. As I told you, corpus linguistics is divided between two segments, corpus and linguistics. And now let us put together both corpus linguistics as we now understand what is corpus, what is linguistics. So basically the corpus linguistics, it is the study of language based on large collections of real life language use stored in corpora or corpuses. We continue to the next point. Corpus linguistics, it is a computerized database created for linguistic research. We have some more ideas. It is also known as corpus based studies. It is also viewed by some linguists as a research tool like corpus linguistics, which is stored or which stores a large amount of information in a database can be utilized as a research tool. And of course it is used in that way. Let's review the lesson. Review one. It is a Latin word. Means the word corpus is a Latin word. In simple English language, it is being referred to as corpse or corpse. See the difference between the spellings. Corpus refers to the idea of meaning as body, body as group or collection. Corpus is a collection of texts of a particular author. For example, the corpus of William Shakespeare, the collection of everything he wrote in that way. Corpus helps us store a large amount of data at one place, while collection is just being put into a category somewhere. The difference between corpus and collection. We have review two about, of course, corpus. Corpus includes real life texts such as novels, drama, stories, general speeches, and so on. Corpus does not include computer generated texts, though it stores real life text in a computerized database. This is a very important point to understand that 
Corpus does not accept computer generated texts, computer generated linguistic elements, but it does store its information about language in a computerized form in a computerized database so that you can retrieve whenever you want from the system by searching information. Continue our discussion. Thus, corpus linguistics is the study of language based on large collections of real life language use stored in corpora or corpuses. It is a computerized, that is to say corpus linguistics here we are talking about, is a computerized database created for linguistic research. Corpus linguistics is also known as corpus based studies. And the last point is corpus linguistics is also viewed by some linguists as a research tool. Definitions of corpus linguistics by M. Wyan, John Sinclair, and S. T. Grace. Number one, definition of corpus linguistics as given by M. Wyan, and he says, he explains, corpus linguistics is a collection of texts, is a group of texts which have been selected. So here are the two points to keep in mind. We have a collection of text and those collections of text must be selected, must have criteria to be chosen and brought together so that language can be studied on the computer. What we find is that number one, corpus linguistics refers to a collection of text. Those collection of text must be selected. That is to say the best one, not like any other sentence or any other aspect of language you can just include into, then bring them together so that language can be studied on the computer. We have the second definition of corpus linguistics given by John Sinclair. And what he says is that corpus is a collection of pieces of language text, like collection of texts in electronic form, not in the manual form, selected according to external criteria to represent. And of course, here also we select the best of the examples of the language. According to external criteria, external criteria here refers to what people normally look for information, data about language. As far as possible, a language or language variety as a source of data for linguistic research. So according to John Sinclair, corpus is a collection of pieces of language text. It is stored in electronic form, information or data is selected according to external criteria. And what is the external criteria? It is how people look for information regarding the language. Accordingly, we store information in electronic format. And what we store in electronic format is about language or it may be about language variety. And this becomes a source of data for linguistic research. That is the point here. We now move on to the next third definition of corpus linguistics given by St. Grace. And what he says is that corpus refers to a machine readable collection of spoken or written texts. So number one, a corpus, it must be machine readable. When we say machine readable, it refers to computer. And collection of text, and collection of text he defines includes both a spoken and written materials. Okay? that were produced in a natural communicative setting. And all those spoken or written materials must be produced, must be generated in a natural communicative setting. When we say natural communicative setting, it is opposed to computerized environment because we can create so many things with the help of computer. The computer can generate a lot of spoken and written materials, written texts. But here what we try to understand is that a corpus must be machine readable, but it must not be created. The text must not be created by the machine. The spoken form must not be generated by the machine. The written form must not be created by the machine. It should be communicated by the real life human texts or real life experiences produced by humans, like those of great writers, like those of great poets and thinkers. Uh, they have written a lot about so many things in a number of ways, in a number of style, in their own different settings, and through their own experiences, they have looked at the life. So that should be 
considered as natural communicative setting. We have further point, and in which the collection of text is compiled with the intention. So how do we collect the texts? We have the intention. What is the intention? What is the purpose? What is the goal? To collect texts in corpora? The first one is to be representative and balanced with respect to a particular linguistic language. We should have the intention of collecting those, those texts as to be representative. At the same time, they should be balanced as far as particular linguistic language. It means particular language is concerned or variety of language is concerned or register of language is concerned or particular genre of literature of language is concerned. And the second point is to be analyzed linguistically. And why do we do so? Because we want to analyze them linguistically. So basically, this is the idea about corpus linguistics. Now, let's review the definitions of corpus linguistics given by all these three important writers. As we said, M. Warren, he explains, he defines corpus linguistics as a collection of texts which have been selected and brought together so that language can be studied on the computer. We have the second definition given by John Sinclair and he states a corpus is a collection of pieces of language text in electronic form selected according to external criteria to represent as far as possible a language or language variety as a source of data for linguistic research. And we have the third one, S. T. Grace. What he explains is that a corpus refers to a machine readable collection of spoken or written texts that were produced in a natural communicative setting and in which the collection of texts is compiled with the intention to be representative and balanced with respect to a particular linguistic language, variety, register, or genre, and second, to be analyzed linguistically. These are the three most representative definitions of corpus linguistics. A brief history of corpus linguistics. A brief history of corpus linguistics. Corpus linguistics has a long history, has a long tradition. It dates to the early 20th century. However, the development and popularity rapidly increased in the 1960s with the advent of the computer era, with the arrival of the computer revolution, with the chance of the information revolution. A digital revolution, in fact, dramatically facilitated, helped, assisted the ability to process and analyze large amounts of data, large amounts of information. We continue our discussion. One of the pioneering projects in corpus linguistics was the Brown Corpus. It was created in the 1960s at Brown University. It contained one million words of American English text. British National Corpus is the most famous corpus. It is now represented by the British National Corpus, BNC. The British National Corpus is well known as a completed project. It was created in the 1990s. Since then, it has been regarded as one of the largest and most varied corpora of a spoken and written data yet compiled, yet collected. It includes about 100 million words of contemporary British English texts held in computer readable form. We continue our discussion. Computational power, the power of computer, the power of digital era. Throughout the years, advancements in computational power and software development have allowed researchers to create and examine large and more diverse corpora. As a result, corpus linguistics has become an integral part of linguistic inquiry. We have some more ideas. Application of corpus linguistics. It is now applied to numerous fields. It includes grammar, syntax, semantics, pragmatics, and social linguistics, and may also be relevant to many other branches of knowledge. Hope you understand the concept in this brief lesson about history of corpus linguistics. Thank you and goodbye.